Okay, so here is a tutorial on how to use the CS model software in conjunction with the 3600 and the 3500 scanners. Um, we'll cover uh, a tutorial on how to use it, but also some of the applications that uh, are very, very effective and helpful uh, in your practice. So, so remember, we've got CS model and CS model plus. CS model plus is everything that I'm going to be covering in this video and more such as the auto segmentation and orthodontic setups and things like that uh, but this video will cover the um, applications that are available in both cs model and cs model plus i think the most powerful part of using cs model is being able to take uh, a dual arch scan using the 3600 scanner uh, for every new patient as a baseline study model and then being able to walk the patient around their mouth, just like you would use an intraoral camera, but much more powerful in a three-dimensional model, uh, full color images like this. And what you can do is on the left-hand side, I can remove one arch at a time and I can flip this up. And now I have some really beautiful clinical photos in a three-dimensional model. I can walk the patient around their arch, around their mouth, and have really nice discussions about big amalgams or recession or occlusion and uh, very very powerful to walk that patient through on a new patient exam uh, without having to take a bunch of intraoral camera pictures still photos this is fluid and i can manipulate it and uh, very representative of the patient uh, and their anatomy this is one of the big benefits of full color uh, amongst others you know, you can't uh, visualize this with the monochromatic scanners that are available and uh, very impactful and helpful for communication and education purposes with your patients. The other nice thing about this workflow is if you treatment plan this patient for a crown in the next couple of weeks or so, when they come back in, you don't have to take a full impression over again. You can simply import that same scan back into the software, digitally cut out the tooth or the teeth that you're going to prep, and then you simply scan the prep teeth that day. The rest of the scan is done. So it makes the workflow much faster, much easier. So let's bring this back down. And go back to where we were before. So I have my upper occlusal and my lower occlusal shots. I can zoom in and out of these. And, and this will display where the patient's teeth are occluding uh, based on the actual bite record. You'll also see here uh, your cut planes so you can actually see exactly where you are so this yellow cut plane correlates to what I see here in my yellow box um, in addition to that my blue cut plane similar to CBCT this is similar to your transaxial slice on a CBCT but it's just displaying the patient's occlusion in blue this is the blue pane that I'm seeing right here and then this blue cross-sectional view is that same exact view. I can put my mouse over it where it turns into a finger, left click and hold it, and then just move it around the arch. And you can see in the lower right how the patient's occlusion changes. While we're on this topic, you can actually take measurements of different areas in the software. So I can actually select my ruler tab. And if we had a larger overjet, for example, I can take a measurement, left click and let go and then left click again, and I get an actual measurement of 5.4 millimeters. This is all one-to-one -one data. There's no distortion, just like CBCT. I can also take measurements on my upper occlusal and lower occlusal. So if I wanted to take uh, mesial distal measurements, I could. Uh, I can also take you know, cross arch measurements as well, uh, like so. Down in the lower left-hand portion of the screen, you can see all three measurements that I've taken. If you want to differentiate the measurements more easily, you can change the color on one of them or all of them. And you can see here, this one is now red. So I know which one is which. I can change this one to you know, purple or whatever, okay? Um, deleting individual measurements, I can hit individual garbage cans here or delete all of them. Or if I want to keep the measurements on the screen for future reference, but just hide them, I can actually just select my show hide measurements here. Okay. 
if I want to take multiple measurements and without having to go back and forth to my ruler, I can select my little drop down arrow and select multi. And now I can actually select multiple measurements all in a row very, very easily without having to go back and forth to my ruler tab. And I can delete all these as well, just with that single garbage can on the top. To change it back to a regular measurement, of course, you would change it back to either the regular ruler or just go back to my selection tab, which I can then now grab any of my bars and continue to use the software like normal. So other options, I can run the registration wizard. And uh, I've actually covered this in a different video. I'm not going to cover that right now. Uh, run segmentation. This is for CS Model Plus, which I'm not going to cover now as well. Uh, this is create an arch which is what we're seeing here. It does do a nice job automatically. We generally don't have to redo it, but if you wanted to redo it, you can select this, it will delete it, and then you just mark your points here. And here's where you can actually create and it measures angles from three points. Um, I'm not gonna go in depth on those features right there. So down below, you can see here, I can scroll my scroll bar down below and capture a screenshot of the entire page. So I just select this camera icon and it will capture a picture of the entire page. In the preferences, if you select your gears up top under your camera icon, you can change this from a JPEG or from a TIFF to a JPEG. Um, both are pretty similar. Sometimes I've seen in different applications when you use those images, JPEGs are a little bit more user friendly. Um, but you can play around with that in whichever one you prefer. Um, so I actually captured one as a TIFF, and I'll capture another one as a JPEG. Those images get put into the patient gallery right here. And you can see here, both images, the first one was a TIFF, the second one was a JPEG. I can drag these images, left clicking, holding my mouse, keeping my mouse held, put it over a PowerPoint or a Word or an email, keeping my mouse held and drag it up, still holding my left button and now let go. And it drops that image right into PowerPoint. So it's a really nice way to uh, grab images from the software and put it into other applications. The other thing that you can do is restore this stuff down. I can drag an image right from the software and just drop it on my desktop. So I can also capture individual screenshots instead of capturing all of these images. For example, similar to how I showed you that image before, I can look at one arch at a time, blow this up. If I wanted to capture just this screenshot, I can just hit this icon right here. That also captures it down in the gallery. So I can use this image, drag into a PowerPoint, desktop, or even if I'm using the CareStream imaging software, I can grab this screenshot, drag it over my imaging, still holding the mouse button, let go, and now that image is inside my CareStream imaging software. Better yet, if I'm using Softint or Practiceworks, when those images are stored and captured in the imaging software, they're also viewable inside the practice management software. So you could use them for other clinical photos and insurance purposes and things like that. So that can be very helpful with how those products work and integrate together. As always, hope this video is helpful and feel free to reach out with questions.